Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are in the Devil's Squat in the Highlands, building a small clan base designed for PvE. This build was suggested a couple of times by Tina Drake, so thank you for the suggestion. If you have suggestions of your own, leave them in the comments below and I'll give them a go. This build is mod free, so without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, I started off with of course the base plate. This base is designed as a mini village, including two separate workshops, a storage hut and a shared home in the centre, surrounded by an exterior defensive wall. I built the base plate, firstly using sandstone foundations to serve as guides, and I then placed fence foundations to begin the defensive wall. Once I'd placed down all the fence foundations, I removed the interior sandstone foundations, and I chose to use stable on the bottom tile and Namidian on the first tile. Once I'd finished the base of the wall, leaving space for the rooms I'll later build, I then began to build up the defensive wall itself. I used stable walls at regular intervals to sort of frame this design, with Namidian walls between the stable pieces to make the structure seem visually reinforced. Once I'd finished off the walls, I then capped them off with Kitan stone ceilings. I then added fences on the exterior edges and around some of the interior sides, alongside adding a covered walkway over the front gate using wooden struts and thatched rooftop pieces, protected on either side by free placed wooden fences. Next, after I added in the floors for the buildings I mentioned earlier, I began to build up the structures within. I firstly started with the first floors of each respective building, all of which used Namidian pieces. I built the walls two tiles high on all structures, aside from on either side of the storage hut, as this build would be a touch smaller than the others. Next, I built the first floor ceilings on each room. After I'd set up the stairs, I simply used Namidian ceilings to cap off the top of the walls, though I did have to use Namidian pillars in the central house to ensure the ceilings had enough support inside. Next for the first floor of the main house. I switched over to frontier walls, the same material palette from Settler Season 1, to build this floor up. I built the walls two tiles high, separating this level into a corridor that runs along the stairs and through to the balcony, alongside two large rooms on either side that will serve as bedrooms. I then capped off the walls with Namidian ceilings once more. Next, I began on the roof gables for the main house's roof. Tackling this roof was fairly challenging as it's not a traditional roof style, so I decided to just go with the flow and see what I came up with. I wish I could explain it better than that, but that is what I did. It worked, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to explain. Next, I built the first floors of both workshops. Again, I used frontier pieces to build the walls two tiles high in a fairly simple design. From there, I also built the roof gables and a covering ceiling above each workshop, which will later be used to create flat top roofs running into a central open gable. I also went back to the house roof and added a central tower. Next for the roofing. I chose to use Kitan roofing for a slightly more rustic feeling that contrasted the colours of the build nicely. 
I simply followed the flows of each respective roof gable I've already set up, which was a pretty simple endeavour that ended up working fairly well. I think the forethought to set up the roof gables ahead of time works especially well for the central house's roof, which definitely simplified a process that otherwise would have been a true pain. I've built enough of these roofs to know how annoying it could have become. I added some ceilings to cover any gaps in the roof, coming to a peak at the tower. Finally, I added awnings to the balcony on the central house and around the rear of each workshop. I also finished off the remaining roof sections atop the storage hut and on the ground floor of the workshops, though I would later adjust these roofs slightly as you'll see in the furnishing phase. I also added some more covered walkway sections with struts and thatch pieces around the entrance atop the walls as I did earlier. Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to of course furnish. Approaching the build, I've decorated fairly lightly with wall banners, added some small buttresses to the workshop walls and statues outside, along with a small stable. Entering the base, I've added paths with walkways, a small wheel of pain, a well and some beehives. Firstly, we'll enter the right side workshop which contains all the relevant benches for crafting metals and hides. The upstairs contains even more workstations, alongside some storage, both functional and decorative, and of course the rear door is connected to the defensive wall which overlooks the courtyard. Next up, the storage shed is a fairly lightweight way to include quite a bit of storage. There are 18 chests here along with a preserving box. The left side workshop is for all your alchemy and glass craft related needs, including advanced alchemy stations on the ground floor, and a dyeing bench, cauldron and casting table on the first floor, with preserving boxes built into the walls. This workshop is also connected to the defensive wall. finally, the central home. I wanted to keep this build fairly compact, so I've put all the living quarters into one space, though of course they could be separated out if you wanted the build to be larger. The ground floor includes a lounge, dining area, and kitchen, which serves as a roleplay friendly area whilst also having utility in the workbenches, storage, and farming options available throughout this floor.
Heading upstairs, this is where the bedrooms are located. Each bedroom is decorated differently and holds two beds, with the house itself designed for four occupants. I also chose to connect the bedrooms together with a walkway that bridges across the corridor, though this is of course optional, and if you wanted to you could just stick to the two rooms being separated as they were previously. Finally, the balcony offers a couple of comfortable seating options and looks over the courtyard at the centre of the base. And there we have it, a mini village style base designed for a small clan. Thanks for watching and thanks again to Tina for the suggestion. This is my more medieval inspired take on this design but there are tons of ways you could go at this concept, so it's something I may revisit again in the future with a different theme. If you enjoy my content, all the links to my Twitch, Twitter, Discord, Patreon, Host Havoc affiliate page, NordVPN discount and NordPass discount are available in the description below. However, of course, you can simply just leave a like, a comment or subscribe, any of those are very greatly appreciated. Patrons get a bunch of nice benefits including sneak peeks of videos, your name in every video, custom made wallpapers in 1080p and 4k resolutions, full size build blueprints, discord roles and more. On that note a massive thanks to our patrons Sadialot, Randar, Connor, Ivy, Torn, Illfated, Coffeeman04, Jacques, Marion Lad, Ryan, Ben, Alfric and Eagle Rose. As always, thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you soon.